think all of you have got this problem with the grouting picture. Now, before that, I will give a somewhat simpler problem on the grouting picture. Article which I have written, and at the end of that article, you'll find a list of books and some references. So, can you see there? 
if I write there is visible? There is no light. So before that, uh, you probably studied kinetic theory in undergraduate classes, kinetic theory of gases. Let me recall some of the assumptions that are made there. You can read this. Gas doesn't have to be in equilibrium. Even if it is away from equilibrium, you can use this framework. But sort of limitation of this theory is that you need to assume existence of quasi particles. If the quasi particles don't exist, then this theory is of no use. dynamics applicable only at equilibrium or near equilibrium, but not very far from it. Secondly, fluid dynamics does not require any quasi particles. Those degrees of freedom don't occur. We just assume a continuum of fluid. So that is the good thing about fluid dynamics. Assumption is the assumption the This 
is the statement about time. Does it make sense? Does it sound reasonable? That when two molecules are interacting, the time that they spend near each other, or time involved in a collision, should be much smaller than the time between two collisions. So that will be, uh, that, that dilute gas would imply this. This is a statement about time. Can you make a statement about length equivalent to this? Right. Okay. The interaction range, range of interaction, should be much smaller than the mean free time, uh, mean free path. This we can call mean free time. And length would be mean free path. Okay. Interaction range should be very small compared to mean free path. And we can call this mean thing which follows from dilute as is, you only had not more than two particles interacting at the same time. It's very unlikely that three particles will be together interacting with each other. So that means only binary collisions are considered. It's two particles meeting or hitting each other, giving rise to two. Only binary collisions are important. So that would mean interaction range. <coughs> This means we can use classical trajectories. Quantum effects are not <coughs> The whole theory is classical. many length scales involved here. The smallest length scale that is that you can talk about is the range of interaction. That is the smallest range of interquantum interaction. Mean 
particle separation. minimum size of a gas to which you can apply kinetic theory. And this is the size of the whole sam gas sample container. R is the size of the container and this is the minimum size to which kinetic theory is applicable. If anything smaller than this, you should not be using kinetic theory. On the drop, drop rate or gas uh, volume, much bigger than the mean paper. So delta Q bar is or D Q bar is the smallest sample to which kinetic theory is applicable. And R is the size of the container. equilibrium region or free heterodynamic region or kinetic theory region. And once the equilibrium is reached, it is much more convenient to use heterodynamics. It's, it's more effective or it's an effective framework. This is a region of As before, I'm going to use natural units, etc. <coughs> Back 
function of x and p. Now, x and p stands for four vectors. So, this is the one particle distribution function. Then is the density, in the number density in the phase space. volume element in the phase space. So, this plays a central role in kinetic theory. time evolution, this is a function of time of course, because this x is x vector and time, so p is e vector and energy is taken to be on shell, particles are all on shell, so e is not independent of p vector, but we have time and space vector here. And the space time evolution of this function is governed by an equation which is called transport equation. And Boltzmann equation is one example of transport. Space time evolution of FXP. There is a quantum version of this theory also, some quantum effects are included, in which case it, this f is replaced by what is called Wigner function. In quantum mechanics, we cannot talk about x and p at the same time. <coughs> particle cannot, you cannot precisely determine x and p. So, Wigner has introduced some quantity called Wigner function which depends on x and p and still has carries some quantum mechanical effects. But we will not uh, worry about it, we will stick to this possibility. <laughs> subtle issue and papers have been written even as recent as a few, few years ago. So, uh, you, you may find simple derivations in some textbooks, but this is 
polyceptral and non-trivial. So I will not I will give you references, but not actually prove that it is a large scale. <coughs> For example, these references. Another very readable reference is this. As I said, this plays a central role, and I'm going to define various quantities in terms of F. First, the particle particle number density and J is the particle three flow. Remember, F was the number density in the phase. <coughs> now, if you don't care what the momentum is, that means sum over all momenta, then what you get is the ordinary number density. Okay, okay. Divided by similar integral without u. 
familiar with the definition of entropy in terms of uh, the n of x number of particles or density of particles. So this is a or generalization of that for so heuristic case. Entropy is more so. Normally, entropy in thermodynamics is defined for a system in equilibrium. But this definition that I am going to give is the kinetic theory definition, which is applicable even when the system is away from equilibrium. Entropy can be defined even if the system is away from equilibrium. And this is the definition for a system outside It could be inside the human also, but it's more general. In terms of F. So density, entropy density. It is introduced to make this dimensionless. If it is not dimensionless, the number divided by d cube by d c. So to make it dimensionless, I am introducing some constant. So this is the density. constant which makes this uh, quantity dimensionless. 
Compare this with our standard textbook definition of entropy in non materialistic case, it is similar. F times log F, basically. Which is that? Why is it minus one log? Again, it, the book says it is for convenience and it doesn't make any difference to measurable quantities. <coughs> What will this do? Suppose you don't look at this term, integrating over d2 pf, this is some number. And so that means you are, you are changing this by nx. If you don't write this, then the two definitions will differ by n of x. And I don't know why, but it, it's not, it doesn't make difference to measurable quantity. Redefining entropy at every point as nx. I think that has to do with number conservation. I will, I will let me write the SU. not writing the arguments of f that are understood. f is a function of x and p. So you are assuming mass is 1. Mass is 1 now? So there is u there and you are writing them p now. No, no. Let me write this, then it will become clear. This is p u by p is u. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it side. So d to p upon p is 0. Okay, so now upon the procedure is suppose mu is zero, that will cancel with this and you will get this relation. <coughs> if P mu is a P vector, P vector upon P zero gives you this U vector. What does this uh, one will do? It will be integral V2 P P zero F times P mu and that is the N mu. Apart from, don't look at this term, whatever remains is just n mu. And del mu, n mu is conserved, number current is conserved. So that doesn't affect what happens to del mu s u. To take del mu s u, with and without this minus 1, it will not make any difference. That is why this it doesn't matter. Even if you don't write, it will measurable quantities don't are not affected. And as I said, this is a characteristic generalization of textbook definition of entropy, which is basically n log n integral over n log n. A summation or n volume. Okay, one more thing, I'm assuming Boltzmann statistics here. With right, the classical particles of Boltzmann statistics. So condition for local equilibrium is You know that as the system evolves, the entropy keeps on increasing, and when it reaches equilibrium, entropy attains saturation. Similarly, here, this is the 
condition for local equilibrium. But in general, <coughs> equality is only for equilibrium, otherwise it is So I have defined number two entropy flow. Now I will define the energy momentum tensor in terms of F. Obviously, symmetric under exchange of mu and nu. And you can look at it as the second moment of F. What was the first moment of F? Number. And mu was the first moment because there was only one p occurring there. There are two p's here, so this is the second moment of F. This was energy density, and what would you call this thing? It's energy flow, because there is a UI sitting here. Now let's look at the first column. Of course, that is also equal to P zero I. 
because this whole matrix is symmetric under a scene of new region. So now compare this with this. What name would you give to this? The momentum density. Finally, the remaining three by three part, spatial part. <coughs> You should verify this. And this diminu includes only rest mass energy and the kinetic energy. If there is any external potential, then this is not the right expression. You have to modify it suitably. So this contains this defined here. It includes the rest mass energy and kinetic energy, but no potential energy. This is a good approximation for a dilute system. Potential energy can be added by writing an additional T menu for the other fields, right? Yeah, suppose you have external electromagnetic field and there is additional terms. T menu com coming from electromagnetic yeah. potential. That has to be added to this. This is the three velocity of a particle, which is well known. And the fourth 
velocity of a particle. How will you define it? It's not dx nu by dt. So dx nu by ds. This is also part of this one of the problem. Problem on the blocking. This is defined as dx nu by ds, where ds is. Geometrically, u mu is a four vector which is tangential to the I have written various uh, macroscopic quantities like energy density, momentum density, etc. Entropy in terms of this F, which is the density in the phase space. I will 
switch off all collisions between the particles. If you ignore this, then the volume element is not changing. It means f of x prime p prime is equal to f of x comma p, or the df is zero. I'm motivating the statement of the you will get df by df. Worse, it says the flows in the phase space are incompressible. So the 
which is gamma times j by dt. And f is a function of what? Function of time, space vector x, and momentum vector p. And you have taken total derivative. So it will be del x by del t plus del t by del x by del x. left it only this put this in a covariant form. So I will multiply both sides by
but if there are no collisions, the cross sections are zero and the collision term contains cross sections, so it vanishes. Sir, so this P mu tells me if it is equal zero. If I integrate this thing over dq p by p zero and take the del out, this becomes a continuity equation del mu and mu is zero. You are saying you integrate this over dq p by p zero. So yeah. Both of these right. are again. Yes. So then, if I do this for the second case, then I don't have the continuity equation. Second case, no. Continuity equation is not there. Okay. I'm going to do this. Just wait for a few minutes. Collision term is a functional of f. So let me write the expression for the collision term and then we'll discuss that. Let's discuss the system. Look at this part. It is referring to this process. Two particles with this momenta, P prime, P1 prime are colliding, giving rise to another two particles, this momenta P and P1. This will tend to increase the population of particles with momentum p. Right? So this is called the gain term. Because you are gaining particles with momentum p. And here, particles of momentum p, p1 are colliding and giving this. We are losing particles with momentum p. This is the loss term. And there is a negative sign because of the loss term. It reduces the population of particles with momentum P. Why the half? To avoid double counting. You can have this going to that or that can be P1 prime, P prime going to or it can be P1 P also. Basically, to avoid double counting of uh, collisions. So, why is why there is no G or P1? Hey, sorry, P. What? Why there is no G? Ah, the left hand side is a function. This F is a function of X and P, right? Okay. Because it is 
the given number is not <coughs> integrated over. So, this is half for double counting on the three even side. So, you can double count on the three times even point side also. So, this half is for uh, both of both of them. This is for the one over four. No, no. Let's look at this. Oh, okay, okay. Integral differential equation. Yeah. On the left side you have derivatives of f, on the right you have f side integral. This is an integral differential equation. Is it linear or nonlinear? It's nonlinear because these are the products of f. Assuming 
one probability is a product of these two probabilities. So this is where <coughs> past is getting differentiated from the future of that. also called an arrow of time because they are differentiating from past and future. So this arrow of time will put in by hand? By making this assumption. The microscopic process, individual collisions, they are time reversal invariant. But because of this, this equation is not time reversal in there. Boltzmann equation is not time reversal invariant because of this distinction between past and future. one particle distribution should be strictly written in terms of two particle distribution and so on. So this is an infinite pair of which you have completed by deriving Boltzmann equation. These are Sobel, Bob, Born, Green, Kurtwood and so on. So which we completed. Yeah. 